Hello everyone. My name is Jasveer and today I'm going to talk about rule based DFM analysis or sand casting process. DFM actually stands for design for manufacturing and rule based DFM analysis is done considering product or geometric parameters instead of process parameters. The diagram in this slide shows a schematic view of sand casting process. In this the molten metal is poured from the pouring basin and then it travels down the sprue into the choke where impurities are filtered out. The molten metal from here on reaches uh, the mold cavity through runners and uh, risers play a very important role in the mold cavity in the sense that uh, they provide sufficient amount of molten metal uh, to uh, the cavity when uh, the solidification starts to happen. The vents allow the gases to escape out which otherwise may lead to porosity defects. Now considering DFM rules, firstly the shape of casting can vary from complex thin walled features to cylindrical, cubic and complex solids like engine blocks. Materials vary from different kind of metals like steels, aluminium, copper etc. Uh, but polymers can't be used in this process. The part size ranges from about 1 ounce which is 28.3 grams to 450 tons. The surface finish is uh, poor. It's within uh, 300 to 600 micro inches and often after casting machining polishing processes are required. The maximum wall thickness ranges from 0.125 to 5 inches and uh, normally the quantities are less than 1000 which goes to show the low production rate. The sprue design has to follow Bernoulli's principle uh, as when the speed of the molten metal flow increases when it is poured down through the basin the area has to be decreased to avoid the aspiration issues. Uh, the riser effectiveness can be increased by making volume to surface area ratio higher and insulating it in order to supply more metal to the potential shrinkage areas in the mold cavity per unit area. Uh, the product that is cast normally has columnar dendritic structures near the mold wall and isotropic structure in the middle. Uh, the, that portion can be trimmed off through uh, further processes depending on whether it is required or not. Uh, heavy heat masses have to be located near to the riser in order to avoid premature cooling in case lighter mass is fed first through the riser. So the design in which the heavier heat mass is located uh, closer to the rise is much better compared to this one. Uh, this is basically because in this case premature cooling can happen and therefore the heavier heat mass may not be filled up uh, compared to this case. Now DFM rules concerning pattern. The pattern has to include features like tolerances, draft etc. This is necessary since the surface finish provided by sand casting process is typically poor and hence further machining is required. So it needs to consider those allowances and a general rule of thumb is to allow 3 by 16th inch of a draft per foot in order to remove uh, the pattern from the mold and avoiding mold cracks, stress concentration zones etc as shown in this figure. Uh, the corners should be rounded to avoid stress concentration and fractures and typically uh, the inner radius should be at least about thickness of the walls. Moreover, in the picture shown on the right, uh, the pattern also has to accommodate uh, the camber that also occurs uh, when casting is done. So, when all these particular tolerances and uh, drafts etc. are taken into consideration, then only the product is of the right quality. Uh, this slide also shows certain design consideration as far as pattern making goes. In the uh, top left image, we see a region of hotspot where the shrinkage can be severe. In order to avoid that, either the changes in design should be done as shown in the image below or cores should could be inserted to form holes uh, in those regions and prevent further hotspots as shown in this figure. Also, material, uh, inter also internal chills could be used so that uh, solidification starts to happen from uh, these regions itself. Uh, the solidification time is given by the Shorvanov's rule and it states that the surface area of the cast product should be relatively higher compared to volume so that a production rate increases. Slow cooling rates uh, tend to cause coarse dendrites with high interdendritic spaces which leads to weakening of microstructure. Very high cooling rates on the other hand cause amorphous structures and so moderate cooling rates must be chosen. Uh, the bottom left figure shows a part with uh, thick walls uh, which leads to increase in solidification time compared to the part with thin walls. Uh, also the walls uh, should have uniform thickness as shown in this figure so that uh, solidification happens uniformly and thermal stresses don't develop. 
turbulence can be prevented by avoiding sudden changes in flow direction by controlling the geometry of the channel cross section in the gating system by using filters in the runner system the fluidity can be increased uh, by process parameters like degree of superheat uh, rate of pouring and design parameters like mold design configurations uh, normally the gate length has to be kept about 3 to 5 times the gate diameter and as far as part parting line is concerned it should be along the flat plane rather than a contour one simply because cost involved in making a flat parting line are less than the other case uh, parts which have say a larger height should be cast horizontally so that the height of casting is minimized so these are the references and sources thanks for watching and feel free to ask your questions in the comment section given below thank you